Hello, child of God. I recently realized the need to add a short introduction to my prophecy and prepper videos to explain the principles which determine probability dates and the dates of the manifestations of Almighty God's judgments upon the earth. If you've already heard this short video intro, the video will start very soon. Almighty God created a garden and allowed Adam and Eve to live in the Garden of Eden as long as they did not break the one and only law. They broke the law and were driven from the garden and into hard work. The people of the earth multiplied in numbers and in sin. They did not respect that Almighty God owns the entire earth. Almighty God sent Noah, the most successful prepper in history, by the way, to preach for 120 years. The people of earth did not repent from their violence and were swept away in the flood. Noah saved his entire family by obeying God and prepping. At that point in time, all of the people of the world were under the law of God, which was written on their hearts. They had the knowledge of good and evil. They knew right from wrong. Many years later, Almighty God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel from the slavery in Egypt. In the wilderness, they were given a new set of laws to live by. Eventually, the twelve tribes moved into the promised land and lived there for a while under the new set of laws given by Almighty God. So God was judging Israel by one set of laws, the laws of Moses, and the rest of the world by the law written on their hearts, the knowledge of good and evil. In the Hebrew law, there is a requirement to keep the seventh day holy and rest. The law also required Israel to let Almighty God's land rest on the seventh year. And again, also on the 50th year. The 50th year is called the Jubilee year. Almighty God gave them a lunar calendar to keep track of the months and all of the feasts. The children of Israel disobeyed these laws and were sent into captivity for 70 years. They were still under the law while in captivity, but Almighty God forced the land to be at rest. After 70 years, Almighty God brought some of the Israelites back to the Promised Land, and the sin cycle continued until the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ as the King of the Jews. The Lord Jesus Christ offered Israel a new set of laws, the laws of the Kingdom of God. The Jews as a nation rejected their King and Redeemer. At this time, roughly A.D. 30, the world now had three sets of laws from Almighty God. The law written on the heart, the knowledge of good and evil, the law he gave the Hebrews, and the laws of the kingdom of God. In revenge for the rejection and the murder of his son, Almighty God allowed the Romans in A.D. 70 to destroy the land of Israel and disperse all of the surviving Jews to other nations. The Jews lost all access to Almighty God's land. We will call the dispersed Jews in the world as Zion. Almighty God sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. He had placed prophets in many different generations to reassure that the dispersed Jews would return to the promised land one day. Almighty God never gave up on his people, and he never lifted the laws of Moses from Zion. No matter what land they lived in, the law had been given to the children of Israel, and it applied to them wherever they were. But God's land rested. Almighty God also promised through his prophets that the Lord Jesus Christ would one one day return, and that Israel would look upon him whom they had pierced. Israel became a nation in one day, May the 14th, 1948. This was a fulfillment of many prophecies. The Lord Jesus Christ told us that the generation that sees these things happen would not die before his return. The world is judged by the law of the heart, the knowledge of good and evil, Zion by the law of Moses, and born-again Christians by the laws of the kingdom of God. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one 
Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Zion's largest population outside of Israel is in the USA. They control a greatly disproportional amount of the national wealth of the USA. At present, it may be the safest place in the world for Jews to live. However, when the U.S. economy crashes, the Jews will be blamed and lose their safe haven. I believe they'll be driven to Israel. Historically speaking, Zion has always been blamed for the world's problem. Jerusalem will be trampled down under the feet of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is complete. Israel is our end time prophecy time clock. They are under the law of Moses and we can see the hand of God in the world by watching what happens to Zion and to Israel. In this video I use the lunar calendar and the law of Moses which are both still in full effect. Almighty God is speaking and sending the signs of the end times to his people. Soon he will send two prophets to preach in the streets of Jerusalem. They will be preaching repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. The entire world is again deeply submerged in sin and rebellion against Almighty God. This is especially in the USA. Just as in the days of Noah, the whole world is filled with violence. Almighty God is again taking away the land from the world of sinners and allowing a few believers to survive. The only perfect preparation that we can make as preppers is have a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom much is given much is expected. And now, child of God, please watch the video. Hello, child of God. The purpose of this video is to discuss the upcoming economic collapse of the U.S. dollar, the coming four blood red moons, the coming up war between Israel and Iran, and the probable Gog and Magog wars following. In order to explain this, I made this graph. And if you look at the horizontal column on the bottom, we have black, green, red, black. The black on the left represents a sabbatical year. Israel was commanded to work six and rest one, keep the Sabbath day holy. They were also commanded to work six years and give the land a rest on the seventh year, keep that land holy. The green represents the first five years of normal planting and harvesting. The sixth year, the red year, is the year that Almighty God gives double, gives the bumper crop, the blessings of that year which Israel was supposed to save up for the Sabbath year, so they would have plenty of food during that Sabbath year. And then, of course, the green starts again, another cycle of five years, a red year, and then the black, another Sabbath year. Well, remember on September the 11th, 9-11, 2001, the terrorists came and attacked the United States. Well, this was a harbinger or a sign from God to the United States that we were leaving ourselves open for attack that God's hand of protection was being moved and allowing Satan to come in and destroy us. But it was a sign. From that, we went into two wars. As a direct result of the September 11th attack, on 17 September 2001, the stock market fell 685 points, or 7.1%. This is also a harbinger. Well, how did you know it's a harbinger? Because it happened on the 29th of Eagle, 5761. It happened on the last day of the Hebrew year, the last day that all debts counseled and all slaves returned and the land was supposed to have been at rest for a year. When we do not do it voluntarily, it becomes a point of judgment. Well, there are many drops in the stock. Yes, this could be just a coincidence, but let's look exact seven years ahead to today. Let's look at the 29th of Elu 5768. 
The stock market crashed 778 points, or 7%. It happens to be the last day of the Hebrew year, the last day when all debt supposed to have been canceled and the slaves set free and so on, that the land was supposed to have been on a period of rest for one year. This is another harbinger. Did the United States repent? No. Did the number of states authorized in homosexual marriages increase? Yes. Did abortions increase? Yes. Did trouble increase? Did sin increase? The United States went deeper and deeper into their sin and rebellion towards God. We happen to be in 2013 when I'm making this video. We're in that year of preparation. This is good for preppers, but we need to prepare a year of food and money and that kind of stuff for the sabbatical year, which is starting September the 25th, 2014. I submit to you that by 13th of September 2015, which is the 29th of Elul 5775, it is the last day of that sabbatical year. I propose that sometime during the year the economy is going to fall, the American dollar is going to trash, it's going to be hyperinflation. Right now, many nations in the world are dumping the American dollar as fast as they can, trying to get into gold, trying to get into oil, trying to get into anything except the American dollar. For example, we are legally required to protect Japan from China. But if we had to protect Japan from China, we'd have to go to China and say, can I borrow some more money from you so that I can protect Japan from you? Let's move to the next graph. The graph is showing the time of the four blood red moons during this same time of the year of rest and thereafter, where the four blood red moons are signs that Israel's in trouble. It's a pretty bad sign for Israel. However, let's not take it to extreme. Over the next few years, there's going to be seven blood red moons. And over the next few years, there's going to be seven total solar eclipses. Total solar eclipses happen almost every year. Blood red moons are not really that unusual. They're lunar eclipses. However, the first lunar eclipse is on a Passover. The next two are on Feast of Tabernacles. And the following one is on a Passover. The four together we can take as a sign of massive trouble for Israel. What kind of trouble are we talking about? Earlier this month, Benjamin Netanyahu went and announced to the UN, who represents the entire world, that the prophecies of Amos had been fulfilled, that Israel had become a nation, and that Israel was there to stay, and Israel would be there forever. He also said that Israel was going to attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. He said that they would do it alone if they had to do it alone, but it would be a favor to the entire world if they did it. When it comes to Iran's nuclear weapons program, Here's my advice. Distrust, dismantle, and verify. Ladies and gentlemen, Israel will never acquiesce to nuclear arms in the hands of a rogue regime that repeatedly promises to wipe us off the map. Against such a threat, Israel will have no choice but to defend itself. I want there to be no confusion on this point. Israel will not allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. If Israel is forced to stand alone, Israel will stand alone. Yet in standing alone, Israel will know that we will be defending many, many others. Now, as you know, Israel is not going to just say they're going to do it and, and not do it. Israel will attack Iran's nuclear weapons program. And then when Iran retaliates, it's going to weaken both of them. Now, in Ezekiel 38, there is a war called the Gog and Magog War. And it is Russia leading a bunch of criminal nations, which are right now Muslim nations, including Iran, against Israel. And they almost totally devastate Israel. But God steps in to save Israel. How does he save them? He sends an earthquake to the mountains of Israel, and he shakes the entire world. It says every fish in the sea will feel it. Every bird in the air will feel it. Every person on earth will feel it. Mountains will fall down, and so on. He will cause the enemies of Israel to turn their weapons against each other and destroy each other. He will also send fire from heaven and rain and so on. And he gives us a warning. What happens with a massive earthquake? You get tidal waves. 
Tidal waves running all around the world. I don't know how tall they're going to be, but they're going to be devastating. They're going to be enormous because he's talking about a world-shaking earthquake. He's also talking about mountains will fall down. To me, an earthquake that would take a mountain down will also take buildings down. Buildings all over the world. These buildings that man has built to his own glory and not to God's glory. Crystal Cathedral palaces that man has made to God. It appears that Almighty God is rejecting them all. All these ancient temples and mosques and great buildings that show man's ability, they're all being taken down, fall into the ground. And my guess is that Dome of the Rock that's sitting on the Temple Mount and all those churches and things that are in that area they're going to collapse. But the Dome of the Rock is going to just slide down that hill. Almighty God is going to cling Mount Zion all the way down to the bread rock and make the mountain available for people of Israel to rebuild the temple shown in Ezekiel 40 through 44. Now, those are guesses, but apparently they're educated guesses. And these are the times of the end times that the Lord Jesus Christ warned us about. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The instructions the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is that we should pray that we are able to stand before the Son of Man. My friend, no one is able to stand before the Son of Man unless he is washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are none righteous, no, not one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let us pray now together and ask Almighty God to forgive our sin and wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just follow after me in prayer, but pray with your own faith and your own sincerity. Father God, that's right, just pray in faith after me. Father God, I ask you now to forgive all of my sins and wash me in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and make me holy unto you. Baptize me now in the Holy Spirit and give me more power to resist temptations. I acknowledge that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for my sin and is soon to return. I forgive all of those people that I have resented or hated, and I receive from you the free gift of salvation. I dedicate my life and commit my spirit to you. I ask you now to keep me strong in the time of testing and help me to stand before the Son of Man. I receive that as done. Amen. Thank you for praying with me, child of God. If you'd like to see more videos on the baptism of the Holy Spirit or on end time prophecy, please click the links at the end of the arrows. May God bless you. Peace be unto your house.